In our last video, we introduced the group of permutations S sub n, a powerful group along with the concept of mappings. We will continue a little deeper into these mappings, and with a smaller group of permutations, S sub 2, we'll show how to compare the structure of some groups and make a statement about them being the same shape. This is what we call homomorphic. On the left, recall Z12, our group of additive integers modulo 12, and on the right we will have S sub 2, the group of permutations of two objects. Now let's introduce a function, a mapping which we will call phi. This function maps all of the elements from Z12 to S2. Let's define this function that all even elements in Z12 get mapped to the identity element in S2. So for example, if we were to perform the function phi on the number 4, since it is even, we would get the answer, the identity element. Likewise, let's map all of the odd integers to the transposition element in S2. sub For example, if we were to perform our function phi on the number 9, we would get the element 1, 2. And that will be our function, our map from Z12 to S2, even integers to the identity and odd integers to the transposition. Now remember, an even integer plus an even integer is still an even integer. If we were to perform phi on the answer, say 4 plus 4, which is 8, we would still get the identity element. But if we were to map the even integers over first, so the equation would be the identity element on the right followed by the identity element on the left, which is still the identity element. So, performing the operation, adding the numbers in the first group, and then mapping the answer to the other group, gives us the same answer as if we had mapped the two numbers over and then performed the composition of functions in the second group. Let's look at what happens for an odd integer plus an odd integer. This will give us an even integer. So, if we take the phi of an odd plus odd, this gives us the identity element in the second group. But if we were to map over the odd integers first, we get the element 1, 2, followed by the element 1, 2. Since this is a transposition element, its own inverse, 1, 2 followed by 1, 2 does give us the identity. This also gives us the same answer if we were to add the numbers first and then map over the answer, or if we map over the numbers and then perform the composition of functions in the second group. Now you can certainly pause the video here and see what you would get if you would perform the addition of an even integer and an odd integer in Z12 and then map over phi the answer, or if you perform phi on the even and odd integer first, and then did the composition of functions in the group of permutations. We have this equation, and if this equation holds true for all the elements in the group, as it does here, we say that the group Z12 is homomorphic to the group S2, or that there is a homomorphism between the groups. Remember, on the left, we perform the operation in the group first, which is addition, and on the right, we would perform the operation in the second group, which is the composition of functions. If these two are equal, then the groups are homomorphic. Now let's look at this without specific groups just to solidify our understanding. On the left, we will have a generic operation which we will call star. On the right, we will call it circle. We will have the set of G on the left with the generic elements A, B, C, D, E, F, and so on. And we're going to compare G to the set H on the right with the elements alpha, beta, and chi. Our mapping we will again call phi. And into phi we will put an element from G and it will map that element to one specific element in H. Such as A maps to the element alpha, B maps to the element beta, and C maps to the element chi. On the left, as we perform the star operation on the set G, let's have A star B equal to C. And then if we take our function phi on the left, we can see from below that our phi map will take the element C and map that to the element chi. On the right hand side, we see that phi of A maps to the element alpha, and that phi of B maps to the element beta. So for our structure of the two groups to be consistent, alpha circle beta must equal chi. And so when we have a homomorphism, we say that this preserves the group structure. The benefit of this is when the group on the left satisfies this equation for all of the elements in the group and not just for a pair, it is possible for us to substitute the homomorphic group, which we may be very familiar with, to help us understand how the first group behaves. It is that ability to compare groups that makes understanding homomorphisms a powerful tool for you to use in the study of group theory. In this video, we showed how a mapping from Z12 to S2 preserved the group structure, a mapping we called homomorphism. In our next video, we will describe some of the characteristics of a homomorphism and build on the concept to an even more robust mapping. 
We will see you in that video, and if you like these videos, please give them a thumbs up down below and help the channel grow by telling your friends or becoming a subscriber.